Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 11 of the GuideQuest series. We're going to be going back to the Neo Geo and this time we're going to be adding hardware sprites to the Neo Geo version. Now if you remember before we were using the fixed layer which was giving rather nasty 8x8 chunk movement. It didn't look very good and it wasn't really fitting of a 16-bit game. Well now we've got nice smooth movement because we're using some hardware sprites so yay for us. Now, as this, the game is basically all of the same, just with a few tweaks to the code, and we're going to be looking at those tweaks today, and hopefully that will make this into a rather nice example of how you can work with Neo Geo hardware sprites, if you so wish. Now, the first thing we need to discuss is the graphics themselves. Now, these are the old tarmac graphics we were using. These are 8x8. Now, the Neo Geo, while it can scale sprites smaller, by default uses 16x16. So what I actually did is I just cheated. I've got a function here. Where is it? Tool sprites sprite 8 comma 8 to 16 comma 16 there we go just spaces out the sprites adding some blank space so we can now save these as 16 by 16 sprites using the neo geo save sprite option here that will work just fine it's what i did to create the graphics for the example you just saw now with the neo geo uh, just like with the pattern data everything is in rom not ram we can't change the sprite data in real time we have to actually save it in some files and we have to tell our emulator to load those files into the addressable rom memory and uh, we use the xml file here the sprite section and these two lines are the two parts of the sprites. The, they are split into two separate files. AccuSprite Editor will do that for you automatically. This is the way that sprites tend to be done on the Neo Geo. So that's what we're doing here. So we can load these in just like this. We need to make sure the memory addresses are correct. They need to match the address that we believe the sprites are at in our code. Otherwise, things won't work so well. Now, that's the way we load the sprites in. We've had to make a few changes to the common code, though. Um, there was an unused byte before here in the object definitions it's now a hardware sprite number if that's zero or 255 then um, the software would still use the old tarmac code not really relevant on the 16-bit systems very important on the 8-bits where we often didn't have enough sprites but basically we're using zero or 255 because most objects reset to zero but the bullet arrays reset to 255 so i only needed around 56 sprites anyway so um, you know anything over 128 we can effectively ignore or anything that's zero so we're using that byte there. We're also redefining the player initialization so that we're defining the hardware sprite number for the player here on these systems. And then in the multi-platform code, we've got a few additions as well. Now we've got a new do get H sprite object, which is platform specific. We're just checking if the hardware sprite number is zero or over 128 here. And if it is, then we are using do get sprite object, the old one that uses the tile map. If it's not, if it's between 1 and 127, we're using do get h sprite object, which will use the hardware sprites. Now, we need to allocate a hardware sprite number to every object that we want to um, have hardware sprites for, which is all of them basically. We've got this function called set hardware sprites, which will sequentially step through an object array, allocating hardware sprite numbers into that byte we've defined here. So we will use that to define the hardware sprites that our code wants to use. Now, because the Neo Geo has all of its sprites in ROM anyway, we don't need to do any transfers or anything. Nothing really needs to change here. Now, the only things that do need to change is we first need to allocate all of those hardware sprites. Uh, we're doing that just here. We're basically starting at two because one is the player sprite and then we're allocating two, three, four, five and so on for the bullet array and this will sequentially step into each subsequent one, the enemy bullets and then the object and allocate them consecutively hardware sprite numbers. Now, when we clear the screen, we need to make sure we actually turn off those hardware sprites because otherwise they would still be sticking around when the, um, the new game menu shows and things, it wouldn't be very good. So we're using this function blank sprite hard and we're just sequentially clearing all of the old sprites off the screen. Now the way we're doing this is we're actually moving to coordinate zero, 0, which is off screen. So we're moving the sprites off the screen so no one can see them. That will do an adequate job of turning them off for us. Okay, now when it comes to showing the sprites, we've got this new function do get h sprite object here. We're getting the sprite frame as before. Uh, there were 16 sprites per bank of animation. So we're just shifting it to the left here to multiply that up. We're then getting the sprite number. We're adding hexadecimal 2200 here because that is the offset for the sprite data. Remember, we had to load in into a specific location here. We've got to make sure our memory location matches this, otherwise we won't show any sprites. Or we may even show the wrong sprites, which will be a bit weird if I put in the two here, for example, and I run again.
Well, our tile map is all okay, but now I have turned it into a crystal and I'm firing now. It's quite funny, but um, as I say, um, you know, not, not what we wanted. So we've got to make sure this is correct. And if it was totally wrong, we might just see blank areas because there was no ROM error at all, which would be very confusing. So um, you've got to make sure everything matches up. Now we're loading in our X position here and we're loading in our Y position here, but then we're subtracting our Y position from this value here. And the reason for that is that the um, Y coordinates of the Neo Geo actually start from the bottom of the screen, but our internal coordinates start from the top. The other thing is uh, our internal coordinates work in pairs of pixels and hardware sprites work in individual pixels. So we're just shifting the X pos to the left by one to double up the X position. So not quite as smooth as we could have liked, but this was originally an 8-bit game and we needed to keep all our mathematics within 0 to 255. So that's why well, that limitation is there. We're then using this set sprite function to actually do the job of setting the hardware sprite here. Now you can see a sort of template of the options that we can pass to this function here. We need to pass a hardware sprite number and that needs to be unique for every object that will simultaneously be on the screen. If we try to put hardware sprite one here and hardware sprite one here, we'd only see it at the second position because we need to use different hardware sprite numbers that for objects that are simultaneously going to be on screen unless we're very clever with regards to the screen refresh, which isn't really gonna work on a system like this. But um, that's what we're doing there. Now we are going to need to set all of the sprite settings of the Neo Geo. Now the Neo Geo sprite settings, the hardware sprite attributes are basically split into multiple sections. A hardware sprite on the Neo Geo is a minimum of 16 by 16, but it can actually be a lot taller. Each tile is 16 by 16, but you can chain a lot of tiles together to make a very tall sprite. That's why in the um, games on the Neo Geo, you quite often saw very tall objects, like, and you'd see things stretch vertically quite often because the Neo Geo is quite kind of tuned to do that kind of thing. So uh, we can use multiple tiles, but if we just want to use a single tile, then we actually need to um, calculate the addresses of those tiles and set the attributes accordingly. So the first tile of sprite zero is at 0000. zero, zero, zero. The palette is defined by 0001. The shrinking options are at hexadecimal 8000. The Y position is at 8200. And the X position is at 8400. So we need to calculate these addresses for each hardware sprite number. And you can see they, these all go down progressively, but um, the, some of them are at this 8000 range and some of the, this zero range. It's a little bit tricky. Um, the actual data we need to transfer, you can see here. Um, basically, the tile address is just the numbered tile, so that's going to be pretty straightforward. The tile palette is defined by these bits here, but there are also some other functions here that we probably don't really need. Uh, the ability for automatic animation, extra tile numbers because the Neo Geo supports a huge number of sprites, vertical or horizontal flipping. We've got shrinking options, which we're not using here. You can't grow sprites, but you can shrink them. Now, in theory, we could have made all of our sprites 16 by 16 and then scaled them down to eight by eight, but I didn't really think that'd be any easier. So we're actually just blanking the extra space out in my tiles. We've then got the Y position of the sprite here, the X position here, and the tile count. Now, the tile count is always going to be one in our example. Now, the other thing you've got is chaining. A sprite can be very tall thanks to multiple tiles, but it can only be 16 pixels wide. But what you can do is you can then chain a neighboring sprite onto the side of it, and they will automatically move as one. And that way you can build a very large sprite. You can also build a tile map because Apart from the fixed layer, which is designed for fonts, the Neo Geo has no hardware tile map. Now, I did cover how to do that in one of my other tutorials, but it's something, um, again, the, the sprites are very advanced, but they need to be to compensate for that lack of the tile map. Now, what we're doing here is we're basically transferring all the data we need to define this sprite. We're calculating the memory address here. We're setting the shrink to FFF here, which is actually shrink off. Um, the higher values are the lower shrinking down, if you will. So one to one is this FFF here. So that's unscaled. And then we are calculating the Y position here. We're offsetting by hexadecimal 200 here. We're transferring the Y position. We've got to shift it to the left to this position here. And then we need to set this bit to one because we need there to be a single tile. Otherwise there would be no tiles. So we're doing that just here. We're then setting the X position here. We're then specifying the tile number here. Now we need to multiply the hardware sprite number by 64 here because there's up to 64 tiles per sprite. So we need to calculate that offset. And then we're setting the palette here, which uh, in, uh, in our example is actually going to just always be one. So that's pretty straightforward. 
Again, we need to shift it to the left by 8 bits though, because the palette is in this part here. Now, we don't actually need anything set to the low bits here, so we're just leaving those alone. Um, so it's a bit of a pain with all of these settings, and the, the, they are capable of some very clever stuff with regard to chaining sprites together and scaling them. I have covered that in my other examples, but it, it was a bit it kind of in the way for a simple game like this. But anyway, um, this is hopefully good for you if you need just a very simple example of how to use hardware sprites on the Neo Geo. If you want to see more Neo Geo hardware sprites, please take a look at my platform specific series where I chain sprites together and I showed you how you could do that. And I've done scaling both of sprites and also a simulated tile map. So if you need to see more Neo Geo, please take a look at that. Anyway, as always, you can go to my website and download the source code for today's example and have a play with it. It's not the best game in the world, but it is a game and it's a fairly decent example, I think. So, you know, you're welcome to do that anyway. Um, if you've liked today's video, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people, which helps me out. And if you subscribe, then I know people are watching the content and I should probably make more of it, which is a help as well. Anyway, whatever you do, I hope you have a lot of fun with the Neo Geo and I hope you find some use for my source code. I hope you have some fun with it. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.